Stones. Haaland! And they've done it! They've done it! Manchester City have done it! It would be easy to argue the best team in the world at the moment is Manchester City. On the back of a monumental trouble, the citizens are looking to win yet another league title as well as defend their title as the champions of Europe. Pep Guardiola has assembled a winning machine with the best football players on the planet. And it's gotta be said, he also has them bought into the Pep brand of football. Academy products complement their squad with the likes of Rico Lewis and Phil Foden, but with City carrying so much spending power, Promising prospects often fall by the wayside and look to make a name for themselves elsewhere. These are the forgotten players of Manchester City's academy. Speaking of, do not forget to subscribe to The Football Records, new videos every single week. Jeremy Frimpong, now one of the most exciting fullbacks in Europe, representing the unbeaten Bayer Leverkusen, Jeremy Frimpong actually had his start at Manchester City. The Frimpong family came from Ghana and settled in Amsterdam. His parents unfortunately split up and then relocated to Clayton and Manchester. It's no surprise, and if anything, has become a regular occurrence watching Frimpong terrorize the wings on a weekly basis at Leverkusen. Even as a youngster, his immense stamina and pace was on full display. He represented both AFC Clayton as well as Clayton Villa sometimes on the same day. After scoring a hat trick in a tournament final, he was approached by several scouts, but he only saw Manchester City as the future for his development as a player. From the age of nine, Frimpong came through the ranks with Man City. He progressed at every level, including appearances for the UEFA Youth League, and at the age of 18, after failing to get senior opportunities, he was given the chance to join Celtic for 300,000 pounds. It was a fantastic opportunity but Frimpong was still apprehensive. I packed to go to Celtic and um, I said to my agent and the driver, let's turn around, don't wanna go no more. Don't wanna go no more. Fortunately, he came to his senses and stuck with the move. Initially signed as a backup fullback, he was thrown into regular first team football within a month, receiving a man of the match award on his debut in the cup. The gift and the curse of Celtic is that they're able to identify and sign talent, but unfortunately, they typically reap the short-term benefits but aren't able to keep them for long-term advantages. This would be no different with Frimpong. After just 18 months in Scotland, he was looking for new challenges. Bayer Leverkusen had gotten in touch for a potential move for 10 million pounds. And after an initial strong start, he has really hit a new level under Xabi Alonso. Speaking of, we have a video on the football records covering Bayer Leverkusen and their success and how Alonso has revolutionized the club. Frimpong, at least on paper, is a right back. However, he plays with immense freedom on the pitch and often is making overlapping runs and attacking down the wings. He's averaged 66% of his game time as a right midfielder dating back to the 2022-2023 season. He is a perfect balance with Grimaldo on the opposite flank, who has a fantastic range of passing to find Frimpong's regular runs. With such promising talent and fluidity going forward, it would seem that Frimpong could be the perfect candidate to be an heir for Kyle Walker's throne if he were to make a return to Manchester. His stock is high, being valued at around 70 million pounds, and he has gone from strength to strength since leaving Manchester. Dennis Suarez, the talented midfielder of Celta Vigo and Barcelona fame, originally started his career at Manchester City. At 14, he rejected Real Madrid. And then at 17, he turned down Barcelona to pursue a career in England instead. A bold move, rejecting the two largest clubs in Spain. He made some sporadic appearances during his youth career with Man City before making a move, ironically, to Barcelona. At Barcelona, he continued his development, but struggled to ever make moves towards breaking into the first team. He was offloaded initially on loan to Sevilla before permanently leaving to Villarreal. It was here that he finally got the minutes he needed. He impressed in his debut season, playing over 40 games and grabbing a handful of goals. The deal to sell Suarez to Villarreal included a buyback clause, which was then executed the following season for 3.5 million euros. He then decided to reunite with his old Sevilla coach, Unai Emery, at Arsenal on loan. It was a disaster. In just his second game for the Gunners, he sustained an injury that would last his entire loan spell. Suarez himself explains every movement, every change of direction, every shot. I tried to train through the pain. It became unsustainable. 
I was not in a state to play at my best. Unai could not play me as he knew I was not even near 50%. He had gambled on a loan move to London in order to get more playing time, but now was stuck in an unfortunate limbo. And because Suarez wasn't able to get minutes for Arsenal, they weren't going to sign him. And Barcelona wouldn't want to play him either. He would go on to represent Celta Vigo, where he played over 100 games. However, after falling out with the club's president, he was sold to Villarreal, back where he got his big break. Now, 30 years old, Suarez will be looking for consistent playing time in La Liga. Kieran Trippier, now putting in solid performances for Newcastle in England. At just nine years old, Trippier signed for Manchester City in hopes of making it as a professional. Over the decade he spent in the academy, he failed to break into the senior sides. It became increasingly difficult as the Abu Dhabi financial injection came in around the same time he was looking at making his mark. He was loaned out to Barnsley before Burnley loan convinced the club to permanently acquire Trippier's services. He was a constant in the lineup for Burnley, playing 170 games before Spurs came knocking. However, he was in tough competition with fellow countryman Kyle Walker. And unfortunately for Trippier, Walker's form was some of the best of his career at that point and limited Trippier to just six Premier League appearances. And from a competitive stance, Trippier has to be a little annoyed with Kyle Walker. Same age, same position, same nation, and I would argue for the betterment of the past decade, Kyle Walker's been world-class. The following season allowed Trippier to flourish with Walker leaving for Manchester City. However, it was a sour ending in London as Trippier felt betrayed by chairman Daniel Levy, offering Kieran to other clubs to try and cash in on the right back nearing his 30s. He was then sold to Atletico Madrid for 20 million pounds, where he would impress and thrive under Diego Simeone as they collected a historic La Liga title the first trophy of Trippier's career. He would return to England a couple years later, moving to the Northeast with Newcastle, leading the side to a top four finish and playing a major part in the evolution of the club, an industrious and talented player. After multiple obstacles and setbacks, Trippier has persevered every single time. Adrian Rabio, the versatile midfielder has played predominantly in France, but Manchester was part of his pathway. Due to multiple reasons, including an ill father, Rabio would only spend six months in Manchester before then returning back to France. In Paris, he would be closer to his family, and it was PSG where he would eventually settle. Making over 100 appearances for the Parisian club, he was a reliable member of the revolution occurring at the newly mega-rich PSG. A testament to his ability, even with the new influx of finances, Rabio was able to keep his placement in the squad. A strong and tall box-to-box -box midfielder, Rabiot has won a plethora of trophies in both France and Italy. With his mother as his agent, potential moves have been difficult to maneuver, such as a failed move to Roma in 2014. When they both agreed that his time with PSG was coming to an end, partly due to disciplinary problems of his own doing, a swift move to Juve was his next destination. His consistency has continued in Italy, playing a key part in the midfield regularly. At just 28, Rabiot has had a stellar career as he looks to get his hands on international honors in both the upcoming Euros and the World Cup campaigns with France. Larice Carius. Carius has had a turbulent experience when playing in England. His disastrous Champions League final performance against Real Madrid cemented himself in football meme culture for the rest of his career. No matter his accomplishments, these moments will be ingrained in football fans worldwide. His youth career took place across Germany before a visit to England with Man City in 2009. It didn't work out as he failed to get any opportunities with the senior team, another player who suffered from the financial takeover in that period. He then moved back to Germany with Mainz, where he initially started playing for the B team before he quickly ascended to senior football at just 19. A hugely promising teenager, and at one point looked capable of potentially representing his country, which in Germany in particular carries a certain status. In the 2015-2016 season, he was able to keep nine clean sheets and voted the second best goalkeeper in the league behind Manuel Neuer. His career was on the up and up, and Jurgen Klopp had taken notice, signing Karius at Liverpool for around five million pounds. Unfortunately, this move would send his career spiraling in the wrong direction. After initially getting a vote of confidence from his manager, stating that he was the first choice, he made a series of blunders that led to him falling down the pecking order and his infamous performance in the Champions League final occurred after a combination of confidence issues and a concussion sustained in the match. Leaving the pitch in tears, he would receive death threats online and his career never quite recovered. Eddie Howe made the decision to bolster Newcastle's goalkeeper ranks with Carrius last season. And even with Nick Pope injured, Carrius still wasn't able to break into the starting 11. 
Carius is now desperate to get out of England with a move to Italy, the most likely destination for the shot stopper. It was an unfortunate fall from grace from what was one of the more promising Bundesliga talents in terms of goalkeepers, at least from his initial emergence. Ben Mee, another player that came through at City but was developed at Burnley, was Ben Mee. A robust center half that never quite got his opportunity in Manchester. Just one cup appearance was enough for me to take his talents elsewhere. Became a bit of a legend with Burnley, making nearly 400 appearances over a 10 year career with the club. One season was a particular highlight. As the captain of the club, he helped guide the team to a European spot. He has since left the club after Sean Dyche was sacked and his contract was left to run out. He would go on to join Premier League rivals Brentford and continued his solid performances before a serious injury kept him out of action. Now at 34, the career of Ben Mee has been a steady and consistent one. He never received a big money move anywhere or lifted many trophies, but is a consistent and loyal player who made Burnley fans proud. Ryan Giggs. Yes, the Manchester United legend at one point represented Manchester City. Ryan Giggs is the most capped player in the history of Manchester United, a true legend of the club. But back when he was nine years old, he was a Manchester City player thanks to a milkman turned Man City scout, Dennis Schofield. Dennis was insistent that the club ensure they were ready for when Giggs turned 14 so they could sign him up before Manchester United. But Alex Ferguson and Manchester United's chief scout, Joe Brown, were already at Ryan's house. And the rest is history. 963 appearances, 13 league titles, two Champions Leagues, and four FA Cups. One of the most decorated players in modern football. With lightning pace and a key eye for the pass, Giggs was an integral part of the success United had in the 90s and beyond. Playing all the way up until he was 40 years old, only ever representing Manchester United, at least in the senior ranks. He has since made the move into management, taking charge of his nation Wales with somewhat mixed success. Clearly one of the biggest names that Man City failed to keep at the club. Michael Olise, one of the best wingers in the Premier League right now. Michael Olise has been linked with multiple moves across Europe, but it was at Manchester City where he began his career. Elise emerged as a key talent for Reading before making the move to Crystal Palace where he has made his mark on the biggest of stages. But at City, that wasn't the case. He was clearly talented as shown by the amount of big clubs he spent his youth with. Arsenal, Chelsea, Manchester City all had him amongst their ranks but didn't give him the trust to potentially break into their first teams. It would be Reading that would give him that opportunity. He impressed and he flourished in his short time in the championship at just 19 years old, Crystal Palace signed him for 8.5 million pounds. The irony of the snubbing at youth level is that now Manchester City are close to signing him for 60 million pounds. Of course, Elise has opted to stay with Crystal Palace, signing a new bumper deal. That being said, at the end of the day, money talks, and I would not be surprised to see a reuniting of Elise in Manchester. Daniel Sturridge. A clutch player for both Liverpool and Chelsea in his prime, Daniel Sturridge had his break with Manchester City. And he's one of the few players on this list that actually got the opportunity to represent Manchester City. Sturridge managed to make a sporadic few starts for the club where he scored six goals. He then decided to leave City for better opportunities with Chelsea. That said, it was the move to Liverpool where we saw prime Daniel Sturridge. And if you've played a lot of FIFA, you'll never forget the celebrations. He scored a plethora of goals in his first couple seasons, forming a deadly partnership with Luis Suarez, including 24 goals in the 2013-2014 season. Injuries prevented him from maintaining his performances and placing the squad as time went on. Despite those few appearances, he boasts an impressive 136 minutes per goal record with Liverpool. We always sprinkle in some hypotheticals, but without a doubt, Daniel Sturridge, if he was able to avoid injuries, would have had a much larger impact or just a bigger legacy with the Reds. Jaden Sancho, probably the most famous what ifs on the list. Jaden Sancho had an opportunity to break into the first team with Phil Foden. Instead, he decided to leave for Dortmund to get more senior football quickly. And it's gotta be said, that was a good decision for his overall development and market trajectory where he was able to put together more than 100 appearances for Dortmund before the age of 21. His drive has both helped and hindered his career at times. Man City's chairman had assured Sancho would be fast-tracked to senior football when he was just 17. But, unable to agree on a guarantee in his contract, 
he failed to turn up to training after the preseason tour. And the writing would be on the wall when he encountered similar issues at Manchester United years later. Eric Ten Hag criticized his training and attitude, which led to both sides butting heads. He is currently back on loan with Borussia Dortmund, where he has picked up where he left off, putting in some fine displays. A tricky winger who idolized Ronaldinho. His pace and skill are hard to keep up with when he's at his best. His initial stint in Germany showed him as one of the most promising players in world football as he picked up multiple Player of the Month awards, creating a deadly partnership with the likes of Erling Haaland, and his confidence was flying on the pitch. Whether he can put his ego to the side for the betterment of his career is left to be seen. But there's no denying that Jadon Sancho is a top quality player. Even a club with the resources and world-class facilities of Manchester City still have players that slip through the cracks and make a stamp on the game elsewhere. A lot of these players left through individual ambition. So let me pose a question to you. Would you bide your time or take a chance on your talents elsewhere.